So here we go. We have these bins in class. At home, you might have bags. It doesn't matter either way. But when you're starting with clay, you're gonna need a couple things. So the first thing I have is a surface to work on. And it's hard to tell, this is like a canvas mat. This isn't a fancy, fancy place mat. Please, if you are in the remote group and you're doing clay from home, please don't use like a fancy dining room tablecloth or place mat. Just make sure you're using something that is like a scrap. Maybe it's an old, I don't know, maybe it's an old towel or you can use a hard surface. Like this is the surface of my drawing table, but you just have to wipe it up when you're done. And sometimes it sticks, which annoys me. And that's why I got a piece of canvas. Don't go crazy later trying to get anything funky like this, but just be mindful of your surface when you're working with clay. The other thing that I have is a tiny cup and it has water in it. I know it's hard to tell that there's water in there, but there really truly is. So just put a little bit of water in there and then you are going to get clay either from me when you're in the classroom or some of you who are at home already have your clay and we are going to be creating bowls out of clay. So what I've done is I also got a bowl. Let me show you my bowl. I'm opening it up and I have like a gazillion layers here. I got a styrofoam bowl. Okay, I'm gonna pop something out for a second. And when you get your bowl, it's gonna just serve as a mold to kind of support the clay because clay is kind of like the consistency of spaghetti. It's like spaghetti, it's really floppy. So get a bowl that can support the floppy clay, but please don't get the best bowls that you have in the house. You can see I have a styrofoam party bowl. It's not great for the environment, but I can reuse them for clay. You might want to get a plastic bowl or like a metal mixing bowl, something that isn't the best bowl. And maybe just check with your grownups if you're doing this at home. If you're in the art room, all the bowls I have there, of course, are the ones for you to use. But the first time I did this project, all my clay stuck to the bowl. And then I discovered a really cool trick. I put inside of my bowl some plastic wrap. Or you can cut up a plastic bag, or you can use uh, extra aluminum foil that's left over. But you do want to kind of put something over the bowl. And in the art room, again, I have the bowls, I have the plastic wrap, but I just wanted to remind you of that step. And for this project, you are going to create a coil bowl. So you're going to get some clay. There's my clay. Does anybody know where clay comes from? Anybody know? You've probably Under used it. Yeah, it comes from the ground. So I dug it up for you. No, just kidding. I order it from a company that digs it up for you. And this clay that we're using comes from the ground, but once it's fired, once it gets really hot, not right now, don't eat it, but once it's fired, it is food safe, it's microwave safe, it's dishwasher safe, it's totally, totally, totally safe. So I'm gonna make a coil, I have my clay, and I tend to pinch it first, but this is just one of those things that you're gonna play with it. And at first it's gonna be totally awkward, but the more you do it, the better you get. And I kind of pinch it. And just so you can actually see it, I'll make it a little shorter. And then I use my fingers. I don't use my palm. You can do whatever the heck you want, but I've just found over time that using this part of my fingers is a lot easier. So I'm gonna use my fingers and I kind of roll from the center out and I'm rolling coils. And you can go as skinny as you want because we're using the bowl mold. I don't know if anybody's ever done clay before with a coil bowl. Sometimes people do it without a mold, which is totally fine, but you have to think more about construction and make sure it doesn't fall down. But with this, you can go pretty skinny. So I got that and I'm rolling, 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 rolling. And if you're at home, you can see on my screen that some of the materials you need might include some tools. And you can get really creative with your tools. You don't have to use proper like ceramic tools. In fact, like my favorite ceramic tools are old dental tools that my dentist gave me. So you can pretty much use whatever you want. But if you're feeling like you wanna make your clay a little shorter, you can either pinch it or like honestly, I just got a really 
soft plastic knife. Don't use like a steak knife or anything and cut yourself, but you can get really creative with your tools. I have some other tools that I was just brainstorming, um, like toothpicks, popsicle sticks, um, toothbrushes that I'm not going to put in my mouth again. Please don't use your toothbrush that you're gonna use again tonight. And I just have all these tools, or you can use just your hands. You don't even need all these fancy tools. So I'm gonna roll, roll, roll. And then I need to wet my coil. So you can just dip your finger in it, or if you're using a toothbrush, I dip my toothbrush in, I scratch it. And basically you're making your coil nice and wet, and you're creating this kind of weird slime on there that'll act like a glue. And now you are going to put your coil in your bowl any way you want. Now it's like a cooking show, you ready? One, two, three, I made a coil already, put it in there. There we go. You don't have to do a spiral, I did. You can do anything you want. You could do little tiny pieces and circles like that. So it's totally up to you, however you wanna do it. You could also just kind of go around in circles with this and layer, layer, layer. You can make all sorts of little tiny designs. And I already put the water in there so I can roll it up, roll it up, roll it up. If it cracks, you can put just a little bit more water on it with your hands. I don't know why I'm like in a spiral mood. I am closing my coils all the way, but you don't have to. So picture in your mind for a moment, like a basket. A basket has holes in it. So you could make more of a basket style. So I'm pushing this up against the edge and you could leave holes and spaces in your bowl. So you can see what I'm doing on the side a little bit. You don't have to, but you could. And if you left holes, you just have to be mindful of how you use your bowl. It would work great for fruit, for grapes, for dry things, if you wanna put them in there, but it wouldn't be the best for something like cereal. So it's 100% up to you what you wanna put in your bowl. Maybe you have no idea, but you can think about that as you're working. If you're using Model Magic, your bowl will work really good for things that are not wet. So you won't wanna get your bowl wet again after it dries, but Model Magic is the same thing. If you're working with Model Magic, you just wet it, you roll it up, you'll still use the mold of the bowl. And it works the same, but Model Magic, you won't be able to put in the dishwasher or the sink. I'll just push it up there. So maybe I can leave if I want. I know it's really hard to tell with my phone, but I can leave a space there if I want. Or I could say, you know what? No, this is my bowl for my ice cream sundaes. I want to put in a little piece to close it up and I will do that. So you can close it up. You can keep it solid. I even have here a little sponge. Again, if you're working from home, maybe communicate with your grown-up. You can cut a piece of sponge off. I think Marcus was talking about that. Um, or maybe you just use something else. Maybe use an old washcloth and wash it out. But I just got a sponge a little bit wet. I hold the outside of the bowl. And you can also push. And this will squish the clay together and fill in any little holes. If you really want to make sure that you can use this for soup or something, for example, I just kind of go like this and I press. I'll also show you next week a few advanced things you can do. Um, I'm trying to keep an eye on the time. We're here till 104. Oh, you know what? I'll just show you now. Another thing that you can do instead of working with coils or in addition to coils, I should say, is you can get some clay. Let me get some more clay and you can flatten it. You could use your rolling pin if you want. You could just use your hands. And you can take your time, you can use little tools, you can use your fingers, and you can create flat slabs that you cut out. So I could use different tools, maybe even something like a pencil, and you can start to cut out some different shapes if you want with these tools. And you can create all sorts of little cool designs and drawings and you can put those into your bowl. So I could actually build a bowl with like all these little fish pieces if I wanted. So that's kind of a more advanced thing, but I know a lot of you are probably gonna get the hang of coils quickly, and then you might say, you know what? The top layer of my bowl is gonna be fish. 
Now also the thing I'll say is I'm doing kind of a smaller bowl for like maybe a smaller size soup, like a cup of soup, but you can go bigger if you want. It's completely up to you how you want to create your bowl and how big you wanna go. My friends at home who already have clay, you are kind of limited to the amount of clay you have, but you can make it nice and thin if you wanted. So I'm gonna stop there for today. If you are working from home on clay, you have to be very mindful to bag up your clay. So what I did was I wrapped my clay in a wet paper towel. This is all my extra pieces. And then I put it inside the bowl and I put my bowl with my clay, with my paper towel into a Ziploc bag. Or if you have clay and you're working from home and you're in the green remote group, you might just want to do this all one shot. You certainly don't have to, but that's something that you could do if you get really into it. And then I still put it in the bag anyway. And this is how we would bring it back to class. But I'm getting way ahead of myself, so I won't get too ahead of myself. Those of you who are in the art room, I have everything here for you. I will remind you of things as I'm walking around. But now you have the full demo. So when you come in on Tuesday or Thursday, I can just hand you the clay. I made a little kit box for everybody with everything in it. I'll just hand it to you and you can get started right away. I did record the demonstration today. So if you want, you could just watch it in the classroom or while you're working. And I'm gonna stop there for questions about clay.